when we look at the Corbett project, why would someone actually want to go and use core boot and there, there there's separate reasons why a company might, might want to go and take their device and port uh, get, get core boot working on it to get core boot ported to it but if if somebody was to go and buy you know people like to go and buy old thinkpads for example and they like to chuck core boot on it what benefit would someone actually get from going and using core boot yeah so that's an excellent question like first from the top of my head, I would say is the security mm -hmm. because after like, let's say, I think four or five years when AMI no longer supports the platform, of course, if you have like a business vendor like Lenovo or HP, they usually have longer support contracts for the workstations and so on. But usually when it, that time runs out or sometimes even earlier, like three years, uh, or if you buy like a uh, mainboard from like less known company, let's say you're buying uh, like OEM, like Medion, something like that, it's likely you will never get updates. Mm -hmm. And because uh, all of that uh, is usually based on a very old code base, you get uh, security vulnerabilities. Like you saw logo fail, pixie fail, all of that was fixed in upstream indicate tool a long time ago. But firmware uh, development, when it comes to like proprietary firmware, is still a complete mess. Like there is no Git, there is nothing. It's just they get like a package from uh, from a vendor, mm -hmm. like uh, like EMI or inside H two O. Like let's say two or four engineers are working on the firmware, and then they test it, and they say, okay, we're good to go. Let's go to production. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to uh, time to update it and they're like okay like stuff broke what's wrong why is it not working you know so oftentimes uh, like you saw a fiasco with uh i think asus last year when they had issue with blowing up cpus and so on i don't yeah, think so... i remember this one actually <laughs> uh I believe it was uh, AM5. They didn't have like oh. pro um, proper protection me mechanism in place. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, AMD's new Ryzen 7000 protesters uh, are currently being affected by a bug in the within the BIOS. Yes, thank you, Dexerto. No, <laughs> we've moved <laughs> moving it past the BIOS already, um, causing him to burn up. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a problem. Or like when uh, this year, when uh, you saw the Intel CPUs uh, getting damaged, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in yeah. order to fix that, you need to update the microcode. Mm -hmm. But then it requires uh, the vendors to mm -hmm. uh, deploy the update, and all, all users have to update their firmware. Which spoiler alert: almost nobody does. Yeah. Even though they should. Yeah. So, uh, I, I've only updated the. I've only updated once, I think. And that's because for some reason I started having weird boot issues. I don't know what it was, but it seemed to have been linked to some need to update. I did the update and everything was fine. But besides that, I don't think I've ever gone out of my way to do so. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the real problem. Like you have all the security vulnerabilities, microcode updates in case of AMD, for instance, uh, AGSA updates, and like people don't update their systems. And sometimes, for instance, right now in front of me, I have Ryzen 7000 ThinkPad. And the reason why I switched to Sway uh, yesterday, literally, is that I'm having weird random lockups with my GPU. Like either it re resets my GPU or it's uh, just straight up freezing. <laughs> also, a uh, Wi-Fi card, if I suspend the laptop and resume it, it works with one megabits per second. <laughs> and if I hibernate my laptop and then resume it, the Wi-Fi completely drops off the bus. <laughs> All right. It, um, and it's a yeah. modern machine with uh, st that's still supported. It's literally been bought two months ago on the newest firmware. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, AMD fixed uh, some bugs with GPU in the newer AGSA. 
-hmm. But now, because I cannot do anything with the firmware, I have to wait for Lenovo to push update. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's sort of the if if you want to look at it more, I guess a a similar example, right? If you look at the way that uh especially more so in the past with Android ROMs, where you'd have these different vendors that all controlled when your phone actually got an update, and then you might have a phone that's a year old, and it's like, yeah, we just don't want to support anymore. Like, enjoy. Enjoy all the security issues. Have fun. It's not our problem mm -hmm. now. So it's the same sort of idea um, there. Yeah, so in defense, we will um, do on a bit of... Um of attention here mm -hmm. that is actually often a uh, fault of like qualcomm or mediatek like right here mm -hmm. i have a vr slash ar headset from mm -hmm. company called Lynx in france right okay it's it is currently shipping to backers on kickstarter mm -hmm. uh, it has qualcomm xr2 soc which is like what three years old maybe four years old and uh, it will likely not get another Android update, which is currently Android 12, because uh, Qualcomm apparently will not uh, support that SOC anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so device that is currently shipping to users, uh, that I know the XR2 is being used by, I think, like HTC in their new release uh, VR headset, it's stuck on kernel 419. <laughs> Well, wait, is, is 4.9... What is the, the bottom of the kernel support range? Is 4.19 dropped already? I don't remember. Um, I think... No, 4.19 is, is the next one to be I... dropped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, whether it's actually running a updated version of 4.19, that's another question. I, I really doubt it would be. <clears throat> Yeah, so that's also another problem is that the way Android is written, uh, you have all the custom patches from like vendors mm -hmm. and it's 419, but it's not, not 419, you know. Right, right. <laughs> right, it might as well just be something that's no longer supported with, uh, with how out of date it very likely is. Yep, exactly. Yeah, um... I, I, you know, OEMs, oh, we, we love them. I, it, it's great. Yep. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> like, here's one thing. If we, if we get like some sidetrack and we, it, that, that, I'm going to just try that one again. If we go down some sidetrack, that's totally fine. And if we don't talk about Corby for like 20 minutes, totally fine by me. 